Barbie's gun in the filmmaker mode. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, they they try it. Yeah, I just... Oh.
It's my great <laughs> it is my great pleasure to preside over this ceremony and welcome you all to graduation 2022. This place looks amazing, right? That's next to our good friends in Equinox Nursery, our guidance department, our maintenance department, who turned this field into a beautiful amphitheater. It is also thanks to whoever brought this weather, carved out these mountains, set this glorious setting so we can celebrate here together. So let's give thanks to all. I want to welcome parents, I want to welcome grandparents, uncles and aunts, brothers and sisters, trustees, faculty, siblings, staff, friends, those who drove down the street to be here, and those who flew from as far away as Germany, Japan, Italy, China, and beyond. Welcome to all. As with any important occasion, there are those we wish could be here on this earth to share this moment. I ask that we bow our heads and have a moment of silence to bring those loved ones into this special occasion. Thank you. Vermont is a very special place on earth and we gather today to celebrate everything great about this school, this community, and the incredible, incredible class of 2022. To get things started, please rise as seniors Will Addington Amos Smithwick and August Stauffer, supported by little brother Edward Stauffer, play a version of America the Beautiful inspired by Ray Charles. Feel free to sway, feel free to join in. Let's all rise. See 
talking about? from his favorite Zen master. Come on up, Dan Flanagan. practicing his faith, writing books, and being a teacher. He died this past January at the age of 95. Thick is widely known as the father of mindless. Mindlessness. Mindfulness. <laughs> I'm the father of mindlessness. Uh, and that's a word that seems to be applied to a lot of things, whether it's mindfulness or just being in the moment, as I know we all are right now. I would like to share some of uh, his thoughts as you embark, graduates, on your journey of lifetime. My own children have heard me say one thing many, many times, and my students have heard me say it thousands of times. You get good at whatever you practice. And that's the truth. Um, Thich, Nhat, Thich Nhat Hanh was not born the father of mindfulness. He practiced it, and he practiced a long time, and he got really good at it. Thich said, my actions are my only true belongings. Our actions are permanent. You cannot trade in being inconsiderate or mean. You own it forever. You can't put poor judgment and excuses on eBay. You can't put hurting people in a recycle bin. Trust me, your actions will always belong to you, and you will never forget. Take also said, only your compassion and your loving kindness are invincible and without limit. Fill your actions with compassion and loving kindness, and build yourself an actions portfolio people will admire. Tech teaches, we are all the leaves of one tree. We are all the waves of one sea. Graduates, right now, you could be sitting next to the valedictorian, or someone who is queer, or someone who is joining the armed services, or someone who has a disability or emotional struggles. But we all have a few things in common. We all want to be happy. We all want to be respected. We all want to be who we are and who we want to be. We all want to love and to be loved. There is no tree, there is no leaf on the tree that photosynthesizes better than any other leaf. There is no one wave that pounds the earth into the soft sand. Practice finding the beauty in every single leaf. Lastly, Tick wrote, the present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are attentive, you will see it, and that is today, for sure. I know that scores of people here today are seeing BBA for the first time. I know exactly what you're thinking. This school is beautiful. It is stunning. 
I'll bet that every member of the class of 2022 and every member of the media community thinks that this campus is beautiful. Experiencing beauty generates joy, and who doesn't love the feeling of joy? Ask yourself, students and my colleagues, how many times this year did you walk up the hill to start the school day and you were mindful of the school's beauty? Likely you were thinking about an exam in CBOC or how I can help a student uh, gain better understanding or about last night's game or how much fun you had over the weekend. That's all either in the future or in the past. It's either your hopes or it's your memories. What about right now? Why does it take graduation, a state championship, or the birth of a baby to trigger joy? All of, these, all of these moments take a lot of joyless work to make happen, as Mark said about setting up this, this wonderful celebration. If we practice looking beyond the tips of our noses, beauty and joy are in plain sight every single moment of every single day throughout your life. You all will get good at whatever you practice. The light within me honors light within all of you. Namaste. Thank you, Dan. Next up, we have Ed Campbell to say a few words. Ed is the chair of the Burton Burton Academy Board. He graduated from Burton Burton in 1970, and this year marks his 41st year as a trustee. So he's got a lot of institutional history. Ed Campbell. watching your parade through town yesterday. Um, not much good has come out of COVID, but I know that parade has occurred over the last three years, and I hope that's a tradition that can continue. It was, it was great to see. You know, it's been said that pride is a deadly sin, but I think it's okay when we take pride in what others have done. And to echo what Mark was saying, it's okay to take pride when we look around our school and at our campus and it's okay to be proud of, our, of the staff who maintains and improves it. And when we reflect on the excellent work done our, by, by our administration and by our faculty. Most importantly, it's with pleasure and it's okay when we join your families, your friends, and your mentors in taking pride in you and what you all have accomplished. It was Vince Lombardi, the great football coach, who stated that perfection is not possible, but excellence this pursuit of perfection. In a few minutes, you will officially become alumni of Burn Burton. Your paths will diverge far and wide. As you follow your various pursuits, and more importantly, as you pursue your dreams, hopefully you will always do so with excellence in mind, and will continue to take pride in you as you keep Burn Burton's honor bright. On behalf of the board, I wish you the best of luck and we extend to you our sincere congratulations. So next up, we have a salutatorian. Her name is Samantha Stevenson. Sam was a freshman mentor, ambassador, vice president of student council, president of the Global Citizenship Club, varsity field hockey player, competitive swimmer and one heck of a student. She has headed to Golden College to study biochemistry and compete in swimming. I present to you Sam Stevenson. friends, faculty, and in the class of 2022. As many of you know, I love to talk. Growing up, if I had an idea, I was convinced that the whole world needed to hear it, so I would blurt it out. Well, some might call this enthusiasm or confidence. It concerned my teachers, and it was a common theme in my report cards. My second grade teacher, Mrs. McGrath, said, quote, Samantha is working hard to learn that ideas from an entire group can be more beneficial than just her own. 
Apparently in eighth grade, I was still working on this skill. My homeroom teacher, Miss Smith, wrote that her goal for me in the years to come was to listen to opposing views and learn how they could strengthen my own. As you can imagine, this tendency made collaboration a challenge. I like things done my way, whether it was a certain game at recess or a project in science. I was much more interested in sharing my own ideas than listening to my peers and learning from them. When I started at BBA, I quickly learned that it is very hard to get to know people when you do all the talking. So I started to try to ask more questions when I had conversations. And it worked well. I made some very close friends with interests and values similar to my own. Then in sophomore year, I took Ms. McMillan's AP government class. She taught all of us the value of learning to understand people's opinions that are wildly different from our own. Throughout the year, there were many debates. Some Sometimes they were assigned and structured, and other times they were spontaneous and heated. I know my voice was raised more than once, especially if it concerned the political opinions of a certain classmate. You know who you are. <laughs> but through those fiery moments, we got to know each other in a way none of us had expected. We grew to respect each other's differences and collaborate effectively on projects. I became friends with my opponents and vice versa. We were able to accept that we might not always change somebody's mind, but that doesn't mean we can't like them. After Dove, I wanted to know more people who were different from me in some way or another. I made an effort to have conversations with everybody I crossed paths with, whether it was in class or in the lunch line. I tried to ask questions every day to get to know at least one person a little bit better. This practice has enriched my life in so many ways. I'm much more patient, especially group projects, I've become a more effective leader as I decided that my role was combining others' ideas instead of always using my own. And most importantly, I've gotten to make so many more amazing friends. I imagine, like me, many of you have developed unexpected friendships since we walked into the gym on our very first day freshman year. One of the things that is so special about this school is its sense of community. All of us on this field today have different ideas, values, and goals but we have a shared experience of persevering through these past four years of high school. It is safe to say that we have all grown and developed in ways that we could never have imagined. I'm sure some of you were of a similar nature to me in middle school. As I stand here stressing the importance of listening and learning from others, I still want to remind you that that doesn't mean you should be quiet. It is equally as important to speak up for what you believe in and to let those enthusiastic, talkative, maybe even brash tendencies be a part of who you are, perhaps just in moderation. As we all move forward, we are going to meet a variety of new people. What I hope for us all is that we don't keep ourselves in a bubble, that we become friends with people who we don't agree with politically or spiritually or who have different experiences than us because we will learn so much from them. And even if we don't become friends with every person, we should still ask questions. Ask questions like, why are women petrified about the removal of their rights? And why are children and teachers clamoring for gun legislation? As anybody who even glances at a headline knows, there's so much work to be done, and none of it will happen without meaningful collaboration. Congratulations to the class of 2022. There's so much ahead of us, and so much work to do. EBA has given us the tools we need to go out and make a difference, and I'm excited to see how we do it. Thank you. Next, we get to hear from our valedictorian. You actually already heard from him a little bit because he was over there on that stage. Amos Smithwick was a fierce debater, an all-state jazz musician, a captain of our cross-country team, and obviously also a very good student. He is enrolled at Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art, where he will study mechanical engineering. Please welcome Amos to the podium. Look, 
I didn't want this speech to be boring, which was a bit of a problem because none of the things that I like are very exciting. For example, this year, I spearheaded a school-wide campaign, campaign to hang poetry in the bathrooms of the urinals. For fun. I know, I know. But don't worry, I promise at the very least that poetry will be flushed away for the rest of the speech. So after racking my brain, I realized that there was actually one exciting thing about which I care very deeply. Something that I live and breathe. A film. A cinematic masterpiece, in fact, that I would be happy to ring on about for a few minutes. This movie, this stunning achievement of digital animation, completely revitalizes my purpose in life every time I view it. The picture I'm referring to, as I'm sure some of you who know me may have already suspected, is, of course, Shrek 2. <laughs> yeah. Now, Shrek 2 came out in 2004, making it the most amazing thing one of that year besides myself. And during the last intervening 17 years, I've probably viewed this movie upwards of 100 times. And given Shrek's lasting cultural relevance with the, the memes and whatnot, it's clear that I'm not the only one who still holds the franchise in high regard. So the question becomes why? Why does this silly movie about an ogre who lives in a swamp grip the zeitgeist for over 20 years with no sign of letting out anytime soon? Maybe the reason is that Shrek 2 is not a movie for children. And now, I don't just mean because of the numerous hilarious dirty jokes. It's about an adult ogre dealing with crippling social anxiety and struggling to find himself in the toxic, superficial culture of being in the far, far away. It's a story that grows more meaningful as you age. The character track, instead of being a handsome Prince Charming, occupies the lowest rung on the social ladder. He's hiding from his own unhappiness by taking mud baths in his swamp and letting the days pass by. His solitary daily routine reminds me of my own during 14 months that I was basically imprisoned in my house during COVID. The days blurring into each other in a monotonous series of Zoom classes. I, like many of my peers, accepted a certain sadness, like Princess Fiona accepted being locked away in a tower. And like Fiona, I've looked in the mirror before and seen an ugly over that I wish would just go away. But during the hardest time of my life, Shrek 2 was there. And it helped me understand that everyone deserves to escape their lonely swamp and find their own peace. After all, Shrek doesn't say emotionally stunted for his entire arc, and he is anyone else. And now, I know I swore off poetry in the beginning, but I'm going to go ahead and break my promise and read some pieces of a Mary Oliver poem entitled Wild Beasts, which unintentionally perfectly encapsulates the message of Shrek 2. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. I have done walking through the desert. This is where I have arrived after my journey of self-discovery that I've gone on in the past year. After trudging through swamps, searching through kingdoms, and leaning on wonderfully supportive friends, and shedding many tears, only some of which were shed during the climactic Heidi Heroes sequence in Shrek 2, I am finally ready to let my body love what it loves, as I hope everyone else is too. Because to paraphrase a wise over, life is like an onion. It's not pretty, it can stink, and you can bet it's going to make you cry. But also like an onion, life has beautiful layers on you. And I can't believe there was a time when I thought that I was ready to stop killing them. To anyone else here today who feels like that, I urge you to keep going. As you endure blistering winds and scorching deserts, know that the greatest cinematic friendship of all time only started because a charismatic hoppy, hoppy donkey was able to strike up a conversation with Kirkley Hoger. Use this as a basis to be open and talk instead of bottling it all up. To again paraphrase the wise ogre, better out than him, I always say. <laughs> and now we'll track to your ends with a dance party led by the vocal talents of Antonio Banderas and Eddie Murphy. Wild beat sounds like this. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination and it calls to you like a wild beast. Harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Remember this. Remember that Shrek and Fiona choose to remain ogres during the cathartic final minutes of Shrek 2, even when given the chance to become handsome, charming humans. Remember that we can find a happily ever after without forcing ourselves to fit into a pretty cut idea of perfection. It's okay to feel like a lonely ogre, but remember that like an onion, we all have beautiful layers that other people appreciate. We all are worthy of love and affection. We all have a place in the family of things. Thank you.
so you're going to think I'm making this up, but I'm not. But my favorite poem, Amos, my favorite poem is Wild Geese. And I discover it, and I'm not making this up, in one of the burn burn bathrooms, <laughs> hanging on the wall about this high. So thank you, Amos, and the faculty and staff heard me talk about wild geese actually just this morning. So you struck a chord there. Um, next up, we have a class gift presentation. I'm going to ask Claire Paxson and Sam Stevenson to come to the podium. as our senior class faculty advisor, Ms. Morin for organizing all of our senior celebrations and working with Mr. Klein to ensure we could donate this amazing gift, and to all of our fellow seniors who voted for this gift and worked hard these past three years to make our community better. Over the past year, uh, us students have been fortunate enough to enjoy all the amenities that Founders All have to offer. We appreciated the amount of options that Founders gave us for working spaces, and for our gift, we wish to expand on that by providing a new set of patio furniture. Not this one, but to represent the patio furniture. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, yes. <laughs> so that students can work outside while enjoying the view of the bell tower and also the amazing view of Mount Eagle. To all future students who can use this lovely new addition, please remember that it is much prettier and not covered in Sharpie. Thank you once again, and we are proud to have served as your student body president and vice president, and we wish all the graduating seniors the best of luck next year. Don't forget to stop and look at the views. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, senior class. Next up, we move to the awards portion of this program, and so let's welcome Academic G Dean Jen Hyatt to the podium. Hello, everyone. Before I begin, I want to acknowledge the individual strengths of all members of the senior class. I hope you all feel proud of the fact that you successfully persisted through extraordinary challenges and are here tonight graduating. Let's start by acknowledging the seniors who received Academic Excellence award, Awards and Athletic Awards at our award ceremony on May 18th. I ask that seniors stand when I call your name and remain standing, and I ask that the audience please hold your applause until the end. Receiving the Jesse Ambedon Citizenship Award was Haley Bender. Amos Smithwick received the Bennett Music Prize. The Cinematography Award went to Matt Graber. Ryan Nolan received the Culinary Arts Award. And the Dance Award went to Lily Hickey. The Design Award went to Natapon Ting Tin Pi Rome to Rana <laughs> Pi Rome to Rowanish. I hope I did you justice, Tin Tin, I'm sorry. Drama Award went to Montgomery Crane and the English Award to Henry Lahew. Amos Smithwick received the John Fay Memorial Award. And the Fine Arts Award went to Tobiana Aldrich. Tobiana also received the Farm and Food Studies Award. The French Award went to Jesse Dykes. And Charlotte Ruley won the German Award. The Jeff Houghton Award went to Warren McIntyre. And the International Student Award went to Xiong Ying Wong. The Mathematics Award recipient is Michael Alfano. The Dr. Richard Overton American History Award, Tobiana Aldrich. The Science Award went to two seniors, Amos Smithwick and Samantha Stevenson. 
The Social Studies Upstander Award also went to Samantha Stevenson. The Spires Award recipients, Summer Murphy and Cheyenne Zellers. Lou Coverly received the Spanish Award, and Michael Alfano received the Technological Arts Award. Last but not least, the Woodworking Award went to Liam O'Neill. Let's give them all a round of applause. the Burn Burton Academy Senior Commencement Awards. The Outstanding Athlete Awards honor three graduating seniors who have excelled academically while exemplifying our mission of responsibility, integrity, and service on and off the sports field. The first recipient is a three-sport varsity athlete who made a significant impact on the soccer, lacrosse, and ice hockey teams. He was ice hockey captain, all Southern Vermont League in soccer and lacrosse, all state in soccer, and he exhibited leadership on and off the sports field. Heading to Wheaton College to play lacrosse and pursue a business major is Emmett Edwards. Our second recipient is also a three-sport athlete who for all four years played with 100% intensity improving the play of those around her on the field hockey, alpine skiing, and lacrosse teams. She was selected to the Southern Vermont first team in field hockey and lacrosse. Described as incredibly proactive, organized, independent, and a leader in all that she does, she will be attending Endicott College and playing on their lacrosse team. Congratulations, Annabelle Gray. field hockey, ice hockey, Nordic skiing, and lacrosse. She was a three-year lacrosse captain, top scorer, and received All-American honors. Off the field, she took part in the student-athlete leadership team, always showing the utmost respect for her teammates, opponents, and officials, a true leader, now joining the lacrosse team at Babson College, where she plans to study entrepreneurship at the State of Sands. two graduating seniors who have excelled within the area of visual, performing, or media, media arts while simultaneously exemplifying our mission of responsibility, integrity, and service. This outstanding visual artist is a talented, exemplary student and craftsperson, quietly determined and deeply dedicated to his work. He is kind, unfailingly courteous, always helping others, committed to making this world a better place, and he has grown tremendously as an English language learner, coming to BBA all of the way from Thailand. Off to pursue a degree in interior design at Pratt Institute is Natapon Tintin Hiram T. Rawanish. In the media and performing arts department, this recipient acts, sings, dances, and plays in musical instruments. He's performed as a member of the band, jazz, combo, chamber choir, circuits, calliope cafes, and multiple theater productions, and more. Always willing to lend a hand and quick with a smile, he's headed to Middlebury College in the fall. Congratulations, August Stoker. <laughs> Senior with the strongest record of service. 
the senior captain, her field hockey and swim teams, organized fundraisers for the Kenya Dryland Education Fund, served as a junior board member of the Be Brave for Life Foundation, was a BPA ambassador, and volunteered as a unified basketball partner. An engaged scholar and member of the student athlete leadership team, she will major in advertising at Syracuse University's Newhouse School for Communications. Congratulations, Karen Marion. are presented annually in honor of former Headmaster E.H. Henry. They honor students who have earned the highest respect of both peers and adults. The faculty and senior class selected two students who are considered by the PBA community to be exemplary scholars and citizens. The first recipient is an accomplished musician as well as varsity football and baseball captain. He is equally talented in academics, serving as the president of the BBA Stock Market Club and winning the 2020 Vermont Stock, Stock Market Game. He is a black belt in karate. He speaks three languages, and he performed in multiple music ensembles, including BBA's Jazz Ensemble and the Vermont All State Music Festival. Next year, he is headed to Southern Methodist University to study economics and business with a minor in music. Congratulations, Will Addington. <laughs> a three-season athlete and freshman mentor with a strong record of leadership, the senior is an active member of the student-athlete leadership team, the Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Group, and she volunteers with the Peru Fire Department. She is a top-notch student who sets an incredible example for her peers, demonstrates persistence, and, unique, and a uniquely positive diligence in her academic work. And she makes the most sincere effort to be kind and caring for those around her. Enrolled in the Honors College at the University of Vermont is Alexa Whitkin. Scranton Leadership Award recognizes a graduating senior who is an outstanding role model and whose record of leadership and service to our school and the community echoes the inspirational work of former headmaster Chuck Scranton. This scholar athlete is a member of our varsity soccer and unified basketball teams. He participated in the student athlete leadership team and captain our ice hockey and lacrosse teams. In the lacrosse, he earned academic All-American and Rising Star honors. He is a compassionate and empathetic person, a natural leader who enjoys cinematography, and who helped organize training and fundraisers for mental health awareness and suicide prevention. This fall, he will enroll at Syracuse University to study data science. Congratulations to Nick Maselli. Awards. These awards celebrate character and three key words in our mission, responsibility, integrity, and service. Instrumental in bringing varsity bass fishing to BBA and serving as team captain, this member of the student athlete leadership team was selected to serve on the Vermont Principals Association Student Athlete Advisory Committee. A BBA ambassador and a software engineer, he assisted the fire department and rescue squad by improving their websites. He designed an app to help anglers select proper fishing lures. And he also created an app to help our special services department assess students' executive functioning skills. He will bring his curiosity drive and zeal for learning to the University of Pennsylvania, where he will study computer science. Congratulations, Michael Alfano. A multi-talented writer, dancer, actor, performer, stand-up comic, cinematographer, and nature enthusiast, this senior loves adventure and challenge. 
She took part in our Mountain Campus program, crafted her own independent study courses to explore our local landscape, as well as her own cultural history and heritage. And she approached all of her learning with absolute gusto. Charismatic, upbeat, creative, curious, and hilarious, she has helped to make our community a more just, equitable, and joyful place. Next year, she will attend Emerson College as she pursues her studies in comedic arts. Kudos to Sophie Cannon. Woo! participated in soccer and mountain biking and was an alpine ski team and lacrosse team captain. A member of the student athlete leadership team and a freshman mentor, he completed rigorous EMT training in order to volunteer with the local rescue squad. He is a quiet leader, humble and kind, and as well as a stellar student. He is headed to the University of Vermont to study health sciences. Congratulations, Jeff Gorley. is a leader at BPA and someone we have already seen multiple times on the stage tonight. She's the class salutatorian and someone who brings positive energy to everything that she does. Congratulations to Samantha Stevenson. speaker. Each year the graduating class selects a faculty member from whom they want to hear one last time. This year we feature someone who joined the BBA Arts faculty in 2012. He's an artist himself and he has brought design thinking to Vernon Burton. Mr. Molinelli was instrumental in the design of our extraordinary maker space in Founders Hall and he works with all classes and all students to develop skills in integrated thinking problem solving and design. A deep thinker and quiet but powerful presence, I present to you your commencement speaker, Paul Molinelli. But I've never, never felt quite as close to a group of people as I have um, with you. Um, I've had the opportunity over the past four years to have conversations with many of you about the work we do together, teaching and learning. Sometimes I was a teacher, and sometimes I was a student. Often they've been about the search to find yourself and your place in the world. For several of you who made the design space your home away from home, those conversations have been particularly meaningful. I don't miss you, I don't miss all of you. So I'm going to speak to you about what I've experienced and what I know about creativity and beginning again. And this is a very, um, I've divided my little speech into four parts just for clarity. We each have a little title. Part one. All in the dark theater, mystery, fear, and uncertainty. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. So when I began at EDA, I was beset with uncertainty. Not at all young and beginning dead again. I wondered, could I survive, let alone thrive here? In the end, I think things worked out okay. 
But at those moments, whelmed again, whelmed with doubt, I often sought out the Riley Center's dark, empty stage as a refuge. Theaters have been an important part of my life, at times empty, dark, and quiet, other times filled with a bright, collaborative, creative energy. There are doorways between reality and make-believe, places where something mysterious and wonderful may happen, spaces of possibilities. But nothing lasts in the theater. The show ends, the audience leaves, the lights go out, and in the, dark, in the darkness we begin again. The great scenic designer Joseph Swoboda said, when I sit alone in a theater and gaze into the dark space of its empty stage, I am frequently seized by the fear that at this time I won't be able to penetrate it, and that I always hope that this fear will never desert me. Without an unending search for the key to the secret of creativity, that there is no creation, it is necessary always to begin again, and that is beautiful. Part two. Transition to creativity and beginning again. So Boda connects the notion of creativity to the idea of beginning again and its essential role in the creative process. He also suggests that creativity is ultimately a kind of mystery. Creativity, an overused word these days, has been commodified, weaponized, trivialized, and seemingly drained of all meaning. Still, creativity itself endures and it remains a as it must a mystery. And I find comfort in that. As to beginning again, we experience time both as both linear and uh, cyclical. We begin again many times in our lives, experiencing many cycles, their durations varying from moments to years, and yet we are born, live, and die, at least as far as we know, but once. Intriguing are the periods between these cycles, the corpuscular moments when a day turns to night, the transitional times when one thing is ending and the other not quite beginning. It's a time when we are most vulnerable, but also most open to the new. Shedding the old sand like a snake, molting like a crustacean, a time of becoming. Now mark by this ceremony, something is ending and you are about to begin again. Whatever your path, once more you will play the role of the rookie, the newbie, and yes, the freshman. But with these many beginnings, you never really begin again with a blank slate because you've acquired some residual lived experience. The not so good stuff you should leave behind, and the good stuff you should carry with you. The trick is deciding which is which. A lifetime of these accumulated understandings are what we call wisdom. Part three, why it matters. Watch out, Paul goes global. <laughs> so I've spoken about creativity and beginning and again and in terms of the individual. However, individual creativity, no matter how clever and appealing, without compassion and responsibility for the other is but a hollow expression of vanity. Or worse, it is deceitful and damaging to the body politic. We are not hyper-individualized, consuming, producing automatons. We are social animals, and together we are at a critical moment in history. In 1930, imprisoned by the dictator Mussolini, the political philosopher Antonio Gramsci wrote, the crisis consists precisely in the fact that the old is dying and the new cannot be born. In this gap in the social order, a great variety of morbid symptoms appear. At that time, the ominous symptoms appearing we're in the deepening worldwide depression and the rise of fascism. Today, once again, disturbing symptoms appear. We all know the challenges, and if we're honest, we also know that they will not be successfully met with a little tinkering around the edges. Business as usual will not suffice. While the present moment is filled with difficulties, it is also time a time when great possibilities emerge. Part four, the last part. <laughs> a call to action. So the question, what is to be done? Two and a half years ago, at the onset of the pandemic, and for the first time in my life, I felt a deep existential fear for the future, something that many people around the world experience every day. I also experienced quietude, a pause in the relentless pace of our 24-7 society, 
a strange gift, there was time to think, and that there was a lesson in it. We must begin again. I remember Dr. Roy, the writer and activist, wrote at that time, historically pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and to imagine a world anew. This is no different. It is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can walk through it lightly with a little baggage ready to imagine another world and be ready to fight for it. That is our challenge. There is no method, no guru, no hero, no savior to fix this for us. There is only us. And um, we need our courage and creativity to begin it again. Thank you. Before we give you your diplomas, I want to honor all parents and guardians here today. Today is a day of pride for all of us, and I can only imagine how much it is a day of joy for you. Seniors, let's turn around and give a standing ovation to all the people in the audience who have helped us all. that the accomplishments of our seniors are also the accomplishments of this great faculty and staff. Can we please give a round of applause to Bernard Bird the finest so we'll see you over here. And while our 190 seniors know what has been accomplished over these last four years, there are about 2,000 people here who might appreciate a small sampling. So let me take a few minutes to tell you about this class. 18 students are second generation Bulldogs, eight have grandparents who are alums, and some have burn Burton ties with additional generations. Two are the first, two are the first in their family to graduate from high school. Nine students will be first generation college students. We have 53 success scholars in this group. 36 seniors attended the Mountain Campus. Five of the students are children of faculty and staff members. Eight of our seniors are international students from China and Italy. Eight are graduating from the Target program. 14 students took career-focused classes at Southwest Technical Center in Bennington. 23 students earned a national seal of biliteracy. I believe one earned a seal of triliteracy. The class of 2021 received over 600 offers of admission and will matriculate in 84 different colleges in 26 states and the District of Columbia and Canada. 31 students plan to enter the workforce upon graduation. Three will join the military and serve our country. Five students are entering technical or trade schools or beginning an apprenticeship. One is pursuing a postgraduate year and two are returning to finish high school in their home countries. Eight students are entering two-year college programs. 134 students are enrolling in four-year colleges. And six will pursue a variety of gap year plans, including study program in Spain and volunteering with AmeriCorps in Colorado. This class helped christen Founders Hall, our spectacular new academic building. They created a large outdoor mural at the Manchester Community Library and exhibited works at Southern Vermont Arts Center and Equinox Village. They performed in PRISM concerts, musicals, Gallic Awards, fall plays, new works projects, and they started a unified music program for students to play together joyfully every Wednesday morning before school. 
At the height of the pandemic, members of this class performed in BBA's first fully online musical, Hair. That production will stand as one more piece of evidence of this group's ability to overcome challenges. And they've got athletic skills. Over the past four years, this class has helped to claim 16 league titles and 10 state championships, including two football championships, two championships in girls golf, two championships in boys snowboarding. We also won in boys golf, girls snow snowboarding, and gymnastics. And we are still competing. In the coming days, we will be competing for state championships in ultimate frisbee, boys tennis, girls tennis, girls lacrosse, and boys lacrosse. And as we speak, our track and field team is competing in their state championship. I will say that's a frustrating statement because we could not get the date changed so it conflict with this moment. And I'm, I'm sorry that our senior track athletes had to make a choice. I'm really grateful that you choose, chose to be here in this moment. So let's give them a round of applause. Over the past four years, this group of seniors helped to start bass fishing, ultimate frisbee, unified basketball, gymnastics, and our latest edition, unified esports. Trophies were also brought home by seniors through a number of academic competitions including Model UN, Debate, FIRST Robotics, and Science Olympics. All members of, this members of this class have been winners by contributing to our greater community and completing more than 10,000 hours of service. During the pandemic lockdown, students assisted the Stratton Foundation, Community Food Cupboards, and the Vermont Food Bank to provide backpacks, food, and art supplies to families in need of support. Students also spent countless hours caring for loved ones and neighbors to make sure that our most vulnerable community members were not forgotten or exposed. Upon their return to school, students brought commitment and energy to Unified Sports, Global Citizenship Club, Be Brave for Life, and the Environmental Club. They helped teach, mentor, and coach younger students. They assisted in blood drives and vaccine clinics. They stocked food pantries, filled backpacks with art supplies, and chopped wood for families in need of home heating fuel. They answered the call at local fire stations, rescue squads, and ski patrol units. They helped clean up rivers, built trails, and cared for our environment. The list goes on and on. And speaking of helping each other, boy did we ever help each other over the past two and a half years. On March 16th, 2020, we shut down. Three days later, we reopened as an online school. Three days later. Last year, we outfitted all of our classrooms with video conferencing technology and taught online and in person simultaneously. That's like walking, juggling, chewing gum, and whistling the Star Spangled Banner all at once. And this year, we came back at full strength, fought through, through Omicron and all these other variants, and arrived at this day with this group safe and sound. This class has led us through an unprecedented time, unprecedented time and reminded us of what we already knew. A community working together can accomplish just about anything. So how about the class? of 2022. So class of 22, 2022, it's time to move forward and get you your diplomas. Please welcome to the microphone, Associate Head of School, Meg Kenny. Graduates, today's speakers have celebrated you, imparted words of wisdom and points of reflection. I now invite you to take a breath to take this moment in. You've all accomplished so much to reach this point, your high school graduation. Congratulations. Now, will the first row please rise? William.
William Keen Addington. Joanna Louise Aldrich. Michael Arthur Alfano. Blake Daniel Allen. Taylor Vi Amaral. Chloe May Lazarus Anderson. Thomas Bradford Andres. Sid Rose Anselmo. Jack Arnold Xander Baird. Laurel Jean Baker. Lydia Rose Barkley. Tucker John Blue Barabalt. Lily Jean Marie Barker. Michael Charles Barnwell. Lauren Elizabeth Barrows. Annabelle Alosha Beach. Carson Wheeler Bevan. Haley Autumn Bender. Kendra Elizabeth Borum. Angelo Joseph Bonanno. William Jeremy Borek. Jackson Strider Reynolds Boucher. Ethan Everett Bowen. Liam O'Connor Bradley. Julia Taylor Brand. Virgil Bucko. Molly Sven Burnham. Dylan James Barrow. Jason Allen Espina Caggiano. Dylan Patrick Callan. Sophie Lynn Cannon. Matthew Thomas Carrera. Olivia Grace Champagne. Piper May Chapman. Sydney Marie Chase. Jianan Chen. Miles J. Chesler. Sierra Grace Claudio. Hunter Allen Cole. Lily Alba Cole. Lily Ann Komar. Connor Scott Corbett. Dylan Coulter. Mason Joseph Cox. Margaret May Crabtree. Montgomery Ann Crane. Aiden Hadas Crisp. 
Lou Mahu Coverly. <laughs> Hannah Sear. <laughs> Catherine Ray Daly. <laughs> Luke Daniel Davis. <laughs> Miley Samantha Downey. <laughs> Dryden, Caden Arnold Dufresne, Jesse Dykes, Emmett Everett Edwards, Keegan Ryan Ewins. Willa Tyler Farrell. Liara Christine Foley. Noah Emerson Forrest. Ian Daniel Frank. Miles Dexter Furman. <laughs> Lauren Rose Gervais. <laughs> Piper Grace Gilliam. <laughs> Judd Tyler Gorley. Matthew Douglas Graver. <laughs> Sophia Marie Granger. <laughs> Annabelle Blue Gray. <laughs> Christina Noel Gregory. Elijah H.T. Haynes in absentia. Serena Royce Ogden Harris. Jeremiah Heavens. Lily Elizabeth Piggy. Emma Sophie Hoos. Tian Tian Huang. Shannon Nicole Hughes. Max Hurley. William Riley Iglesias. Isabel Odell Iris in absentia. Nathaniel Cole Jacobs. <laughs> Taylor Edward Jarvis. <laughs> Carter Francis Jasinski. <laughs> Yuhan Jiang. <laughs> Timothy Wilson Johnson. William. Dustin William Joseph. Alexander William Kehoe. Joshua Xavier Kehoe. David Keyes. Ryan S. Slikowski. Aiden James Connells. Charles A. Kuntz. <clears throat> Alexandria Danielle Lacoste. Henry Kenneth 
Thank you. Christopher 
Michael Ott. Joseph E. Willett. Calvin Ellis Mark Parent. Jenna Nicole Parker. Nicolo Antonio Pau. Claire Margaret Paxson. Ariana Pearson. Merritt Elizabeth Perkins. Ada Grace Perry. Rowan Kathleen Perry. Cameron Wyatt Peters. Natakong Perong Taranovich. Victoria Poda. Brielle Ann Proctor. Oscar Francesco Rosso. Coleman Christopher Reese. Andrew Scott Reed. Faith Ann Ross. Cameron M. Roy. Evie Chaplin Roy. Charlotte J. Ruley. Madeline L. Ruley. Rowan Burkett Russell.
Sammy Elizabeth Bigu. Rio Villarreal Metz. Keller James Virgilio. Casey Lynn Vogel. Xiaomi Wong. Alexander Joseph Wazaliko. Jasmine Cassidy Wilkins. Lily Clara Williams. Abby Rose Windover. Alexa Noel Wicken. And Lily Zen. Please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, and I suggest you get your cameras ready, I present to you the class of 2022. Let's let the caps fly. Feel free to count with me. One, two, three. singers come to the stage to lead us in song. say to all of you, class is dismissed. Go for it. Congratulations.